All right, so like we have on pages nine and 10 in our coloring book, this deals with connective tissues. And like I promised, I made you this little video because we had to go through this super fast because of the ACT and the short amount of time that we have. So I just wanna make sure that we all understand what's going on. Remember you have four kinds of tissues and in the case of epithelial tissue, which is what page eight in your coloring book talks about, epithelial tissue deals with your membranes and they're divided into simpler stratified based on how many layers they have. And if you're simple, you have one layer and you are used to absorb and secrete. If you're stratified, you have multiple layers and you're probably used as a membrane that goes around an organ to help hold that organ in place or to help protect that organ. They're also named based on their um, shapes, squamous being flat, cuboidal, columnar, pseudostratified versus transitional. We then went on to talk about nervous tissue and nervous tissue was found on page 13 in our coloring book. And that's where it talks about a neuron, which is the actual nerve cell. And it's not called a nerve cell because it's not circular. And then we also have the neural glial cells the neuron is what actually creates the electricity. Neuroglial cells are supporting cells, they're helpers. Without them, the neuron cannot create electricity like it's supposed to. We then talked about the third type of tissue, which was muscle tissue, and how this is what makes up our muscles and is used for movement. And we mentioned that we have three kinds. In the case of skeletal, this is what is used to create our skeletal muscle. It attaches to our skeleton. This is what physically moves us. Cardiac muscle is found in our heart. And then smooth muscle or visceral muscle makes up most of our organs. Okay. They all have a certain protein pattern in them. And that protein pattern is called a sarcomere. Just in the case of skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, those proteins are thicker because these muscles need to be stronger. So we can see that pattern. And that gives them a striped appearance and we call that striated. With skeletal muscle, skeletal muscle is voluntary, meaning you had to learn how to use these muscles. Cardiac muscle and smooth muscle are involuntary. You did not have to learn how to use those muscles, which leads us to the fourth group. And some of this is a review from class, okay? When we talk about connective tissue. Remember when we look at connective tissue, we divide it up into basically three groups. We have what we call the loose connective tissue, which is areolar tissue, adipose tissue and reticular tissue. We have what we call the dense connective tissue, which is dense regular and dense irregular. And these are all on page nine in your coloring book. And then we have what we call the specialized connective tissue, which is bone, cartilage, dentin, and blood. But in the case of our loose, in, excuse me, in the case of connective tissue, we talked about how connective tissue has a lot of space between the cells, but it can't be hollow. So nature fills that space in. And whatever nature puts in that space, remember that's called the ground substance. So when you look at this, let's see if I can get this to work. Right, like these big, thick red ones here, that's your collagen. Okay. These thin purple ones, okay. those would be, um, ela probably, this isn't working very well, elastic fibers. Okay. These purple cells, those are your actual um, connective tissue cells. But we've got, so these collagen fibers, these elastic fibers, these would all be examples of ground substances. Now, when we talk about the matrix, the matrix is the state. So if I were to ask you on your test, what's the matrix of areolar tissue? You only, you have three things to choose from. You're gonna tell me it's a liquid and it's not because only blood is the only thing that has a liquid matrix, a solid, but it's not because bone and teeth are the only things that have solid matrices. 90% of your t connective tissues have a gel matrix. So like I mentioned, this is your loose areolar tissue. This is on page nine in your coloring book. And this is what actually makes up your basement membrane. Okay, its main job is to hold the membranes onto the organs. This is what makes up your basal lamina. We then moved on to adipose tissue. Okay. Adipose tissue is also on page nine in your coloring book. Okay. It is what holds our fat. So this makes up what we call our subcutaneous layer. Sorry, my handwriting is not the best. Sub meaning under. Whenever you see cutaneous, cutaneous means your skin. 
So we all have a layer of fat underneath our skin, and this is where we find our adipose tissue. And it tells you in your coloring book that your adipose tissue is an aggregation of fat cells. Okay? It does have fibers in there to help hold everything together. Okay? It also is used as a source of fuel. It's used for padding, and it's used for insulation. And then the last one, which is not in your coloring book, which you need to add, is reticular tissue. And with your reticular tissue, all these little small purple things are the cells. You can see there's a lot of white space in there. So it has a gel matrix, and you can see it has like these purple fibers in them. And these purple fibers are what we call reticular fibers. And I mentioned how these are very sticky, like a spider web. And so reticular tissue is used in filtering. And it's going to be found in organs like your liver, your lymph node, and your spleen. So these are your three types of loose connective tissue. We then have dense connective tissue. Also on page nine, we have dense regular, which again means that these are tightly packed together. It looks a lot like smooth muscle, just seen it from this picture. But with an electron microscope, you would actually see that there's a lot of differences. But dense regular lets you know it's dense, so they're tightly packed together. And regular means that they're nicely stacked. They're, they run parallel with each other. And it talks about dense regular tissue on page nine in your coloring book, consisting of parallel arranged masses, again, collagen and elastic fibers. Remember, collagen is that really thick, it's the, one of the strongest fibers we have in our body. So the more collagen something has in it, the stronger it's going to be. Elastic is like a rubber band. It's going to be able to, you know, change shape. So this is going to, anything that has elastic fibers is, is flexible. And this is what forms our tendons and our ligaments. Ligaments are what attach bone to bone. It holds our skeleton together. And tendons are what attach our muscles to our bone. So they have to be strong because they're holding things together, but at the same time, they have to be flexible. Sorry about that. But in the case of dense irregular tissue, again, it's dense, it's tightly packed together, but you can see that there's no pattern there. It still has a lot of collagen fibers. That's what this thick line is right here. Okay. This thick line, these are collagen fibers. And remember, collagen fibers are some of the strongest fibers we have. Okay. So this is gonna give this tissue strength. It also has elastic fibers in it. That's gonna allow this tissue to stretch, to change shape. Well, in the case of dense irregular, connective tissue, the main place that we find this in our body is in our skin. And if you think about it, our skin has to be strong. It's on the outside of our body, and it has to be able to stretch as we move. And this is all of what's on page nine in your coloring book, which then leads us to page 10, which are what we call the specialized connective tissues. Now, blood is not on page 10 in your coloring book because blood is talked about later on when we deal with your circulatory system. But blood is a tissue. And a lot of people don't think of blood as a tissue. They just think of blood as blood. Well, remember, by definition, a tissue is a group of cells that work together. Well, when you look at this picture, these guys here are your red blood cells called RBCs. This guy right here, is a white blood cell, and it's actually a white blood cell called a monocyte. It's been stained so that we can see it. And these little purple things here are your platelets, what are also called thrombocytes. So blood is a tissue. Okay? Blood has a liquid matrix, and its matrix is what you know of. Its ground substances are what you know of as your plasma. And plasma is mostly water and stuff that's dissolved in that water. So blood is a tissue. It's the only circulating tissue we have. So it would figuratively connect parts of your body because it, it goes to all different parts of your body and it carries nutrients and waste products. So this would be a type of specialized connective tissue. Now page two of your coloring book deals with your skeletal system basically. Your skeletal system consists of cartilage and bone. Hyaline cartilage is the most common type of cartilage you have in your body. And actually, when you're born, this is what your skeletal system almost entirely is. Okay? As a fetus, pretty much the only place you have bone is in your skull to protect your brain. The rest of your body is this flexible cartilage because you are all curled up inside of your mom's uterus. Well, in the case of hyaline cartilage, you can see it has a lot of ground substance. These little purple cells right here, 
Those are your chondrocytes, and it mentions chondrocytes on page 10 in your coloring book. Those are the cartilage cells. All of this stuff in here, all of that is your ground substances. Lots of collagen, lots of elastic fiber. Okay. Your coloring book talks about hyaline cartilage. It makes up the, the um, cartilage at the ends of your bones, which we call articular cartilage. It makes up your trachea. It's found in your rib cage. It's found in your nose. Okay. But cartilage is a vascular. It takes a long time for cartilage to repair itself. It takes a long time for cartilage to um, make new cartilage cells. So when you're a fetus, you're actually born, what you call your bones are actually pretty much all hyaline cartilage. And over time, the cartilage cells will begin to die. And the bone cells, since they have blood going to them, can reproduce very quickly. So when we talk about ossification, cartilage doesn't turn into bone. As the cartilage dies, it gets replaced by bone. But in the case of hyaline cartilage, it is incredibly flexible. It's the most common type of cartilage you have in your body. And it's really flexible because it has the elastic fibers in it. It's really strong because it has the collagen fibers in it. But just like you can see on page 10, it talks about chondrocytes, lacuna, collagen fibers, elastic fibers. Well, in the case of the matrix, it would be a gel. But like I said, you have these purple cells and these purple cells are the chondrocytes. But notice they're like in this little chamber. That chamber is called a lacuna. What the cartilage cells do is they'll swell up as the matrix is forming around them and the matrix is a thick goo. And then they'll shrink back down to normal size and they've left themselves like a little chamber that they can live inside of. But hyaline cartilage is found, again, this is what most of our skeleton is when we're first born. And our nose is still hyaline cartilage in order to make it flexible because our nose sticks out. If our nose was bone, we would break it all the time. Our trachea is hyaline cartilage, and that's to make sure that it stays open so we can breathe. And in your ribs, you also have hyaline cartilage so that your rib case can flex so that you can breathe. And anywhere you have a movable joint, you're gonna have what's called articular cartilage to keep the bones from grinding together, and that's also made from hyaline cartilage. Your second type of cartilage is called elastic cartilage. And it gets its name because it has a lot of elastic fibers. So this is incredibly, incredibly flexible. And in humans, it is kind of a vestigial, which means we don't really need it anymore. We still have it, but we don't need it. Elastic cartilage is found in our ears. And as humans, our ears don't move the way that our four-legged friends do. If you think about a dog or a cat, they can manipulate their ears to act as speakers or to act as um, satellite dishes to gather sound. That's why when you wanna hear something, you cup your hand to your ears. Well, our four-legged friends can manipulate their ears in order to help amplify sound. Well, our ears are also made from elastic cartilage. We just can't move our ears like that anymore. We also have elastic cartilage in our epiglottis, which we're gonna talk about when we do our digestive system. It's a little doorway that opens and closes when we swallow. And the last type of cartilage is called fibrocartilage. And it gets its name because it is not only really densely stacked like a bunch of fibers, but it has a lot of collagen fibers in it. Fibrocartilage is the strongest cartilage we have in our body. And it is found in joints that don't really move. Like if we need to seal something together, if we need to make sure that those bones are really stuck together. So this, as you can see, is dense fibrous tissue. And the best place that that we find this is in our intervertebral disc. These are the pieces of cartilage between our each bone and our backbone, which then leads us to bone. And bone is one of the two types of tissue that has a solid matrix. Bone is also, when we talk about a bone, a bone is an organ, like your femur is an organ. And remember, organs are groups of tissues that work together. Because when we talk about a bone, it will have epithelial tissue. It will have a membrane around the outside of it called the periosteum. It'll have a membrane on the inside called the endoosteum. That's epithelial tissue. It has blood vessels. That's connective tissue. It has um, nerves going to it. That's nervous tissue. Bones just don't have muscle tissue in them. But bone gets made through this stuff called osseous tissue. And what you're looking at here, bone has a very characteristic, 
or what we call um, compact bone, which is the, the hard bone, has a very characteristic bullseye pattern to it because bones have blood vessels running through them. And the blood vessels form the bullseye. And these are these things called herversion canals. And you can see this on page 10, so it'll save me from writing it out. Those are blood vessels. And then what happens is the blood, the bone cells will form a circle around the blood vessels. And your bone cells are called osteocytes. Well, the ground substance hardens. It's like a cement. So this right here, these little dark circle, these little dark spots that kind of form the ring around it, that's where we would find bone cells. And bone cells also form little chambers. Remember, those little chambers are called the lacuna, okay? and they sit down inside of that little chamber. All this hard stuff, okay, all this stuff out here, that's called the lamella. The lamella is the hard calcium and phosphorus, kind of like the hard cement that forms. And we'll talk a lot more about this when we talk about how bones form. But this is a type of tissue. And then the last tissue, which is not in your coloring book at this point,